Do you have any mask experiences? I did. I went to Walmart and uh, I got a drone and uh, a new monitor to have a third monitor for the command center here of Freedom. Oh, and yeah. You were going to say I got a drone who greeted me at the door. No, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Hello. Thank you. Welcome to Walmart. Get your stuff and get out. Um, I love you. Um, so, no, no, uh, not a physical drone. I'm referring to the person as a drone, like an unthinking drone. Well, there the was drone somebody drone. at the beginning. Did you want to pick up on that wordplay, Jim? Uh, I did. I did. An NPC. <laughs> See a non a, a non player character well, taking it out. Follow and with and get out. Things they're doing. We're I no longer do. going to interact with any employees. We're going to have drones fly to the people, and they can talk to the drone. And we'll have our employees in a back room in the safe zone answering people's questions through the drone. Hey, hey, yeah. Right. But see, the thing is, is so I, I, I walked in, uh, I had my mask, the little, there's no such thing as a free lunch from the Libertarian National Convention. It was in my truck, just kept it in case someone will use force of government against me. And uh, so I walked in and they're like, you need a mask to come in here. I, as soon as I walked in, I saw one person without a mask in there. And I just said, all right, that was my entry access to get in. Took it off, and then actually somebody recognized me at the uh, at the Aberdeen uh, Walmart. There it was pretty interesting. So, um, but yeah, no, it was uh, it was interesting to see how many people I, that were wearing a mask. There was only I counted only three people, myself included, uh, that weren't wearing a mask. And the lady that wasn't wearing a mask after me got in line behind me, looked at me, and looked at everybody else, and we looked at each other like we understood that 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 we are walking in the zombie land. This is the you will watch yeah. who will these are everyone that's wearing a mask that's perpetuating this in my opinion is uh is essentially doing what we've been discussing uh perpetuating the coronaphobia the fear and and you'll see who will watch people let government do whatever they want to people by who is willingly wearing a mask like this so cj one of the headlines that we're not covering today that i read was that the some public health officials and government officials are warning us that fatigue it's 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 fatigue with the we couldn't like it's like no we wait, wait wait now of all it's like of all the burdens that government places on us wearing a mask is insane you got to work for government half the freaking year the average working American I, I will remind people every show if I have to the average working American is working for government half the year with all the taxes, fines, fees, and other costs. On average, everything you, you do, you're working for... Wearing a mask is, is not... You think that's what's going to tire us out or that we're going to get tired of that? You know, the, the limits of tyranny <laughs> prescribed by the endurance of the oppressed? We have endured way more. This, like, in the bigger picture, in and of itself, wearing masks is not significant. I'll agree with the critics on that. It doesn't make it right. I mean, I'd say, yeah, which, which is... Which am I going to spend more time talking about? Rearranging your life so you pay less in taxes or not wearing a mask? Because not wearing a mask is only relevant right now, and it's pretty simple, and we're going to be over it. And we don't you know, tell you every day, but we will remind you every chance possible. Like It's way more important that you you know, do what you can to starve the beast, to live agorist, and not materially support the authority that is taking advantage of you any more than you are absolutely, literally forced to, to, to you know, choose a lifestyle based on those values. Um, but yeah, the, the, this, so CJ to, to, to like, you're, it, it's not fatigue. It's people are getting it and going, this is bullshit. So one of the other stories, you know, I wanted to share, we, we went to, we went to a sprouts and sprouts, uh, natural gross notes. Wow. What's their tagline sprouts. It's something organic grocery or. Hippie grocery store, okay? That's why we were there. I love it. Um, but it, they, they tend to have, I think, an, an older customer base from what it seemed from just our limited experience and from my bad memory, uh, or imperfect memory, I'll, I'll say. But uh, we walked in, and there was someone at the door offering a mask. And, you know, they said, do you have masks that are required here? We're good. No, thanks. And we walked up to the deli counter to order a sandwich. They had a sign that said, we're taking the orders. We're not taking paper anymore. And we'd write it on a little piece of paper. Oh, you could get Corona that way. So uh, 
we, while we were standing there, uh, and I, and I, I hate to call someone out for being obese because a lot of people it's it's like it, it, it it's it's like racism or, or sexism like to really dog on someone personally for being obese it, you know because it, it, now and it's tricky with that because it's not it's not a perfect comparison because for most people who are obese it's kind of a choice and then you kind of want to rag on them for that legitimately but for a lot of people it's not. It's legitimately not a choice, and you 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 don't want to you know be disrespectful of that. But this guy, you know, he's a really heavy set manager. I mean, so so heavy he had trouble walking. I don't want if I was if I was being derogatory, I would say he waddled up to us. And it's it's the just the the, the I only point this out because of the irony of him asking us to not eat food. Like to not eat healthy food that we're going to go eat over an imaginary health precaution that he's putting more effort into than his own health. I mean, I, I my heart breaks for this dude, really. Like, you whatever abuse you have experienced, whatever health challenges you've experienced, whatever it is that has led you to live in a body in that shape. You know, and then, Adam. To, take, and then to take a job where you have to tell me. I'm being so unhealthy that I'm not able to, to, to eat and to get to pick up food from your establishment. And they, they said, you know, if you don't want to wear a mask, we can do curbside service. So we didn't push it. Like we said, we have a medical exemption. He said, that's fine. We'll give you curbside service. And, and Sam was just like, no, we're going to take our business health elsewhere. And I was like, yep, cool. <laughs> right, yep, that, well, I'm okay with that. Punish your business for, you know, uh, misjudging what their customers actually believe in and want. I mean, so I said, you know, maybe they have an, a more leftist or more elderly customer base and that's their business decision. We respect that. We respectfully take our business elsewhere. The funny thing is that we went also to a, is it TJ Maxx on one side and a JC Penny and a Rue 21 little like sort of, women's clothing boutique on the other side and they all had totally different policies but the most restrictive one tj maxx we walk in they have two greeters right they have one in the doorway in the double glass door entryway and then they have another one at the end of the you know entry area after that uh offering masks and sam was like adam i just want to i really need to shop here let's just go along with it and so i took a mask and i wore it on my chin the whole time <laughs> anything at all and i could have said i have a medical exemption they probably would have been like whatever um and in that store half the people were wearing their masks wrong like with at least the nose nose exposed or um and, and I wonder if there are people who are like wearing the mask over their mouth, but not their nose, thinking they're doing the right thing. Going like, are you admitting to being a mouth breather? Who like, because otherwise this is just like normal. Like what? Really? You can't cover your mouth when you cough, like a considerate person would anyway. But when you sneeze. And breathe out of your nose, or you're, you're walking around. <laughs> really? I, I don't think that's it. I think for most people, it's just like, this is dumb. I don't care. This is more comfortable. Right? And there were people even in that store walking around with no masks at all, about, about a fifth. Nobody cared. Everybody was low key about it. And then at Ross, we walked in. There was a greeter who had them, or J.C. I think it was. They, there was a greeter who had them at a little stand by the door. No thanks. Walk by. No big deal. And there, you know, at one point, actually, this was in Flagstaff. This was the, the day before we went to a Marshalls, and and it, same case there, except we were the only ones not wearing a mask. And same thing like at at Walmart in in Prescott. Very few other people. Lots of people learning it improperly. But sometimes you walk into that scene and it's like, whoa. Where am I? 
And you know, like in zombie movies, when they, they you know they have those scenes where like the hero is surrounded by zombies and doesn't yet real like they they haven't realized that they're there yet. And it's like, uh, oh, Adam, what do it's you make of this though? What what do you make of this? That I'm not wearing a mask. Are they are they all gonna like freak out and attack me or like? And it's not that bad. Like I'm not literally afraid for my life. Obviously, I'm exaggerating a lot to make this comparison. Right. But the dynamic is like, feeling oh shit, like eerily similar. Yeah. What are you showing us here? This is a man breathing in with a uh, vape, and then he's showing you that the mask absolutely does nothing for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's rich. Oh, geez. There's yeah, thank you, CJ. Around. There's a picture going around of the fibers of masks zoomed in and then the scale of a virus. And it's yeah, the right. Of the mask. Now, no, I mean, I, mean that, I, I don't want to, like, rely on that as the main argument. Right. Because it's right. not. It's, it's not. It's that there's, there's no science that supports it. And the idea that there's a virus that is deadly enough to warrant this, but not actual science-based precautions like like a face shield or you know something that's, that's more like of a seal. That I mean, it's symbolic. It's so annoying at this point. Well, well, Adam, I, I got, a bigger, I got well, a bigger concern that I wanted to bring to you, Adam. Uh, you know, you, you, you say I'm, I'm from the great state of meth, Dakota. I say I'm from the great state of meth, Dakota. And our governor, the queen of meth, Governor Christy Noem, is uh, <laughs> is uh, she, she's doing something interesting I want to bring to your attention. It just came out over uh, on August 1st. And that is she's basically asking for donations because she's not making us wear masks. That's because fine. I mean, that's, no. I mean, I don't say it's fine. I mean, it's like normal political pandering. There's nothing special about that. No, 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 no. The, the thing is, is it, it's basically saying, it's basically saying, hey, because I didn't shut down schools, because I didn't do this, give me money. And, and the, so the, the comment threads are basically saying, wait a minute. So you, you, you're you basically going to toy with the idea that we have to pay you and donate to you to show you support that you're not making us wear this mask. You're not... Man, uh, no, no, no. So, like, I don't want to defend Christy Gnome on this point and be mistaken for defending her overall or her politics or worldview in any way whatsoever. But I do have to make this point if you're going to bring it up like this, DJ. If you accept the general status narrative and and go, well, look, if, if we have Christy Gnome reelected as governor we're not going to have lockdowns if her opponent gets elected we're going to have lockdowns well yeah you should support her all right you know? and then if you donate to her yeah now this is wrong because she's a republican she's an establishment republican and donating donating to her is a waste of money that could go to a legitimate libertarian or charitable cause and voting for her uh, when there's a libertarian alternative is still voting for the lesser evil and re-entrenching the evil of the duopoly. But in and of itself, within the, the if you don't get those points, this isn't special. And I don't have a problem with this. Like, if anything, it's, it's a sign. I mean, I would look at that news and say, that's a good sign that politics is becoming more responsive to, to people in market demand. It is not as able as it used to be in subverting the will of the public or public opinion, right? Like, so if, if, if Christy Nome is going, hey, look, I did what the people want. Please help me get reelected. That's a lot better than, ha ha, I'm a lying asshole and I have more money than the other guy. So reelect me. Well, like, just, you know. just, to, just to nip the Christy, uh, Christy Nome, queen of meth uh, thing in the butt here real quick for you. Um, she is funneling and, and racketeering this coronavirus money through her donors. So that's a whole nother story for a whole nother day. But um, we sure. are, we could talk about this all day long. I'm sure you want to cover some news stories though. And we do have our guests backstage. Well, so. if, yeah, if Chris is ready. Let's get Chris and then we'll take the last, uh, you know, third of the show at least to, to do headlines real, real quick and, and more comments that, but yeah do my, we have co your comments my last, uh yeah i've been putting comments or do you have another mass experience you got to cover here yeah please yeah. Was, you go to auto zone 
uh, my power steering pump was leaking, put some Lucas stop leak in it. I went into AutoZone, and this was in Phoenix, mind you, so I never have a shirt on. I, do, I always forget to put my shirt on when going into a store, and I make them tell me, hey, you have to have a shirt on to be in here. <laughs> Most places don't bother me. But, it's Arizona in the but, summer. You, there are a lot, yeah, there, but... and there are a lot of places you can just walk around barely clothed. Uh, yeah, yeah it's mean. nice. Yeah. But Phoenix I have a mask. <laughs> I walk in. The Lucas Oil stuff is right there at the front, <laughs> 10 feet from the entrance. I walk in. I see this stuff. I'm reaching down to grab it, and there happens to be a lady restocking stuff. And she says, you have to have a mask to be in here. I said, oh, I have a medical exemption. Thank you. And she goes, can I see your doctor's note? And I like that was the first time I had heard that. I got challenged. And I chuckled on. and I said, I don't carry a doctor's note around, you know. And I said, and that's a HIPAA violation. Right. Go fuck and yourself. I said, politely, right. I understand. I don't think you're even allowed to ask for that. But that's the right. Know. Yeah, that's the right response. And then, uh, and then she referred. She looked back at her manager who was behind the thing, and she goes, Yeah, and you got to have a shirt on too. Oh, <laughs> 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 you won't be taking off me because of the shirt. Because of the mask thing. If I had a mask on, you wouldn't have said anything about this person. I wow. said, oh, so, that's just silly. I said, oh, I'm, and I already had the stuff in my hand. I said, I'm, our, I'm just here for this. You know, I said, maybe I'll redo it next time, you know, or whatever. I said, can I just get my transaction done? And she was like, yeah, just come on. We'll nice. Go. Okay. So that's, yeah. Was, so this, so, you got, and you, so that, that my takeaway from that is you got to feel sorry <laughs> for people who have to work retail, who are genuinely confused and torn between what they know to be true and what corporate policy is and everything else. But no, I actually have, I have one other important yeah, message. I, I had the Lucas oil in my hand. She says, okay, fine. I'll let you buy it. I was walking up to the counter and it's not even thinking. <laughs> <laughs> she, and I swear to God, she looks at me and goes, and you're coughing. <laughs> I was like, come on, it's a cough lady. Yeah. I'm not coughing. I cough. And I covered it. You know yeah. what I mean? I was, I like went down. It was a real soft. Um, no, but it's, it's like, do you know that, that I didn't was, cough into my hand? And cock your head, like, really? You're going to cough too? You do know? you know that I didn't cough into my hand in the car and get the virus on my hand and then grab the product and then hand it to you? Like, are you really? Right. Are you, and even then, this comes down to the libertarian position that reality sort of just naturally leads us to anyway, which is you got to be responsible for your own health. Sorry. Like, really? Like, anyway, so one other, okay, one other mask story, and we'll get to Chris. This is actually really important, and it, it's a really encouraging story. <clears throat> um, because I, I got to observe an interaction where, well, I'll just tell a story. So I, I bought a fridge on Craigslist. Very excited about that. Oh, yeah, awesome. you I finally you do get to see it this morning. No, we're, we're going to, our post show office time is on the roof today. Um, but uh, yeah, the uh, on the lanai, excuse me, on the lanai of the camp kitchen. But uh, so I, I got a hundred dollar fridge on Craigslist. We bought, bought a great deal, thank you, Lewis. Amazing, if you're watching from Chino Valley. Um, and I, you know, when you're going into someone's home right now, and see, this is actually another th important point to make as well as explaining my policy on this. I said, I'm coming with my wife. We observe. No coronavirus precautions whatsoever, but we're happy to do whatever you like at your home. And they said, we wear, he just wrote back, we wear masks. And I don't think he was even talking about like, like if we had just showed up, he probably wouldn't have said anything. Right. There's an abundance of brightness. Out, but they, but they, right, right. He probably spent when, when we're out. And you know, but they did have a couple uh, older people living in their home. So reasonable precaution. I, I suppose, like, if, if with with what we know and we don't know right now, to say, like, if you have elderly people in your home, and, and I mean, I suppose this would be, this is, the, I would have to weigh this against, is this normally an appropriate thing to do, not just a coronaphobia season appropriate thing to do? And it's, uh, yeah, if, if you have someone who's elderly or immunocompromised in your home, and you're bringing uh, random people in your home to, to, to move furniture or... Or uh, you, you know, pick up something on Craigslist, and they're going to be sharing space. Eh, I, I think it's more practical to just keep them separated somehow and clean up afterwards. But to say, hey, you know, wear a mask in the home. We do our, our best to keep this as a special sanitary space for our people. Okay, whatever. So they, so so uh, Sam had two of the masks from retail 
you know, basic blue ones in, in, in her purse. And so, you know, I just, I showed up with them on, knocked on the door and, you know, they came to the door with the mask and we got, we, we were getting the fridge loaded up onto the truck. We realized we needed another hand. He said, you know, well, we, we can do this, but let me go get my, my burly neighbor. Ooh. And, it, and it was, uh, so it was an Hispanic family, by the way, telling us the fridge. Young guy spoke English. I got to practice my Spanish. Uh, I, I, I got to share this one line for any Spanish speakers with us today because this killed. Uh, they, they, I asked, you know, where they're from. They're, it's funny. All of us, Sam, me, this whole Mexican family, I should say, uh, Hispanic family, and um, and and the, the white gentleman from across the street, all from California originally. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, so I, they, they asked me, you know, where were you from? Well, you know, New, what were they said? Where did you learn Spanish? So I lived in New Mexico for a while. And then they said, oh, New, New Mexico. See, see, si, see. Si, si. And and Nuevo Mexico, todos los gringos dice, uh, el Nuevo Mexico es más limpio que el viejo Mexico. And they just, they, I was like, I, I was like, are they going to be offended by this joke? But I, told, did, did you get it? Uh, no. It, in New Mexico, that. all the, of all of us. I'm, 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 say, I'm sure our guest Chris gets it. I can see yeah, it. Said, New Mexico, it's cleaner than the old Mexico. <laughs> it's just, it's a dumb, you know, wordplay New Mexico joke that is like, wait, are you saying because it's American, it's cleaner than the Mexican thing that we call Mexico? Okay. You know, so it's got this like weird, you know. It, it, you can tell it tongue in cheek and it's just a wordplay joke. You know, you can tell it in me in a mean way. And it's got this like weird, like you know, derogatory connotation about Mexico, Mexicans being dirty or something. You know, it's yeah. new, it's cleaner. Um, but they all loved it. And so when, when the, the important thing is that when their neighbor came over, no mask. And they didn't ask their neighbor who's coming to help move the fridge. And he's like, oh, I don't need, I'm not dad. You can wear masks around me. But you know, it's all a hoax, right? And to hear him tell them, and they're all like, "Oh, huh?" They 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 weren't reacting. How dare you say that? You're spreading propaganda. We have to censor you on social media. No, they were just like, "Oh, yeah, probably that makes sense." You know, like uh, the general response. Uh, just in case, you know, but just in case. And they didn't. They didn't ask him to wear a mask. Anyway, we're over time.